Hello everyone. Today, in this session, we will learn about nature of management. In the previous three sessions, we discussed about various topics of chapter 1, nature and significance of management. We talked about introduction, meaning and concept of management. We also learned about the characteristic features of management. Then we discussed objectives of management as well as the importance of management. In this fourth session, we will talk about nature of management. Let us be very clear that management is as old as the civilization. Organized activity was there since ancient times. We have pyramids. We have ancient townships, Mount Jodoro, Harappa. What differentiates a civilized society from the uncivilized one is the management. Earlier, management practices were a set of rules and regulations derived from governmental and commercial activity. But with the course of time, the rise in trade and commerce led to the development of management principles and practices. Management has different connotations highlighting its different aspects. The study of management has evolved over time and it is based on both experiences and practices of managers. It is also based on a set of theoretical relationships. With the course of time, management has grown into a dynamic subject. It has become interdisciplinary in approach. It drives its contents from various disciplines like economics, anthropology, psychology, philosophy, political science, math, etc. The main thing that we will see when we say nature of management is whether management is a science or management is an art or management is a profession. In order to answer this, we have to take a certain course. First of all, we will take up and see what are the features of science, what are the features of arts, what are the features of profession, and then see whether those features are present in management or not. And on the basis of that, we will arrive at the conclusion whether management is a science or it is an art or it is a profession. So, first of all, let us see whether management is an art. The features 
of art are three. The first one is existence of theoretical knowledge. If we take any subject, economics, history, political science, whatever, all these art subjects are based on theoretical knowledge, whether music, dance, painting, sculpture, And similarly, management is also based on theoretical knowledge which we have acquired over a period of time with experiences, experiments, practices and techniques. So like art, management is also based exists on the basis of theoretical knowledge. The second feature of art is, it is personalized application. When we talk of film directors, all film directors have different presentation. All dancers have their different styles Every teacher who comes to the classroom teaches the same subject but the approach is different. The branch manager, the principal of his school, all of them have their different working style human relationships. Same is true with managers as well. Managers have different working style, interpersonal relationships. Though all of them carry out the same set of activities and functions. So like art, management is also effectively based on personalized application. And the third feature of art is, it is based on practice and creativity. Managers also act and function as per the various practices which have evolved over the period of time. They are also creative. That's why there is difference in the personalized application. Therefore, this third feature of art, which says that it is based on practice and creativity, is also present therein management. So looking back, all the features of art are present in management and therefore we say that management is a pure art. Now we will take up science, see what are the features of science and whether they are present in management or not. The first feature of science is, it is systematized body of knowledge. It is like a chain building one upon the other. It is systematic, it is scientific and when we say scientific, we mean observation, experimentation and conclusions. So management is also 
a systematic body of knowledge it is also based on experimentation of the first observation experimentation and then conclusion so like science management is also a systematized body of knowledge it is a discipline it is a course there are degrees and certificates in it the second aspect of science is its principles are based on experimentation it is not based on experiences as we have seen earlier once we observe we experiment and check the validity of the observation and when these observations through experimentation gives a clear cut conclusion that the observation is right or wrong only then it we arrive at certain conclusions same happens with management the next chapter principles of management we learn about scientific management and all the principles of scientific management it techniques are based on experimentation carried on by frederick taylor in the assembly area of factories so this feature of science is also present there in management and third feature of science is universal validity meaning thereby the principles of science are valid everywhere around the globe they have no time or place dimension the value of g gravitational force remains same respective of the part of the earth we are but this principle of universal validity is not applicable in management because in management as we have seen we are dealing with a group with a team we are basically dealing with human beings there is an element of human beings and they come from different backgrounds they have different aspirations so what is good for one may not be good for the other so this principle of science universal validity is not applicable in case of management due to the element of human beings so out of the three features of science two are present in management but third one is not present therefore we can safely say that management is an inexact science its principles are flexible that's why they are not universal then comes profession the first feature of profession is, is it is a well defined body of knowledge be it medicine engineering architecture music similarly management is also a well defined body of knowledge based on practices and techniques
we have degrees in management, certificates, BBA, MBA, BBM, whatever. So like profession, management is also a well-defined body of knowledge. The second feature of profession is restricted entry. In management, one has to obtain a certificate degree from a recognized institution affiliated to a professional body. Only then they can get in, into, into the profession. Like doctors, their degree must be recognized by IMC, Indian Medical Council. For advocates, there is Bar Council of India. For management, engineering, there is National Council of Technical Education. If we don't have any degree, we can't enter into any profession. But for management, this is not true. Dhiru Ambani, the patriarch of the Reliance Group, was a simple matriculate. One does not require a degree to start to carry on a business. So this feature of profession, restricted entry, is not applicable in management. Then comes professional association. As we have seen, for doctors, advocates, engineers, MBAs, their degrees must be recognized by a professional association. We have just seen that it is Bar Council of India, Indian Medical Council, National Council for Technical Education, ICAI, Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, and all the professions are bound by the rules and regulations of the professional association. If they work contrary to what are the rules and regulations of the association, they get deregistered. So a professional association holds a very important place in a profession. But in management, there is no such professional association. And even if there are any, their rules and regulations are not binding on the managers. They may not work as per the guidelines given by their associations. Therefore, this feature of profession is not applicable to management. Then, Fourth one is ethical code of conduct. There is a code of conduct, what to do, what not to do, what is right, what is wrong. A doctor cannot make the medical report of anyone public. A lawyer is supposed to guard the case history, the case details, of his or her client. They have to follow certain ethics. If they don't do that, a complaint is made to their professional association and they might get deregistered. It happens in the case of advocates, it happens in the case of doctors. But in business, there is no ethical code of conduct. There is no hard and fast rules and regulations. There is flexibility. Businessmen are at liberty to follow code of conduct or not to follow them. 
so this feature of profession existence of ethical code of conduct is also not present in management and the last feature of profession is service motive a profession is there to serve its clients the society in general be the doctors advocates architects teachers there is a service motive which forms the crux of their existence similarly management also has service motive it has to look after it has to satisfy the needs and wants of its customer base only then it can survive in the long run therefore this feature of profession that is service motive is present in management as well so out of the five features of profession only three are present only two are present in management and three are not there therefore we say that management is a part profession summing up management when we say art management is a pure art when we say science management is an inexact science and about profession management is partly a profession